you piece of Swiss cheese. Bunch of low lives. What's he here for? What's happening, everybody? This is the Philly Experience Podcast alongside Chris Stagger and Tyre Hood. I'm your host, Max James. Tanner Martin is not in studio again today. He's catching a flight back to Philadelphia later today, but he'll be back in studio next week. He better. For the start of the fall semester. But guys, we miss you, man. A couple of big headlines this past couple days. Andrew Luck retires from football at age 29. Very surprising. And the Philadelphia Phillies as well. Just now, one game out of the wild card. Uh, they didn't have a very successful series over the weekend against the Marlins. Uh, but they came back last night ahead of a uh, pretty surprising walk-off from Sean Rodriguez, of all people, who you would not expect to uh, be up in that big-time situation. He's but on my list. <laughs> he uh, he had a big hit for us, and uh, it was fun to watch. And T, Eagles, we're less than uh, two weeks away. Dog going right. Whoa, careful. It's early, my man. I'm not quite all there yet. But before we move on to anything, Max and T, I want to address the elephant in the room. Oh, oh. And before we address it, I want Ricky Bo from NBC Philly to address what happened. What was it, last Saturday? Yep. Oh, boy. Take it away, Ricky. That our first name is Philadelphia. Yeah. And, and yeah, That was embarrassing. You right? embarrassed us tonight. You embarrassed Philadelphia that game, tonight. That Phillies. game was one of the most brutal games I think I've ever seen. Seven to nothing, you're up against a terrible. And let's not sugarcoat this. This team down in Florida is bad. And this Phillies team had a seven-run lead. And it goes poof. That oh. does not happen in Major League Baseball if you're even a decent a decent team. You lose a seven-run lead early on in this ball game and then get destroyed. Forget about it. You had a seven-nothing lead and you had to use a position player to pitch. Who? That- Couldn't have said better myself. Well, okay. um, before you two get started and get into it, yeah, I would like to thank the 2019 Philadelphia Phillies for participating in the okay, 2019 well, MLB whoa, whoa, whoa. season. Calm down. Did you hear what Max said? I heard what he said. Our gracious host, the captain of the ship here. Yeah, I heard what he said. What did he say? Repeat it. Don't matter what he said. Either way, I'm announcing the death of it. It's over one game. One game. (laughs) We are one game. Your your mic is on. Yes. (laughs) Okay, we're going to act like that didn't happen. One game. (laughs) Only one game, T. We are right there. Like I said, I know the Phillies have been frustrating the hell out of me. I know it's also been frustrating. Frustrating the hell out of Max, but given the fact that we just got curb stomped by the My- Miami Marlins, I'm not putting up with it. It's too yeah, much horse. Exactly, it's Peter. Too much. I know, but look, Peter. Before you lose it, <laughs> other teams around us have, have also been losing. The, the Mets are kind. Of, I mean, I don't want to say they're dropping off. They they but they have lost a couple games. It's kept us in it. Oh, Cup, good for you. Comes as well. Talk again. Switch mics, man. Switch mics. What the heck is going on around here? I don't know. Um, (laughs) What a great start for our 8 a.m. show. Well, this is what happens when you have to come in early in the morning. Oh, jeez. Yeah, we we, we get dropped with the the bad stuff. But here, I'm pulling up the standings real quick. Look, T, you gotta you gotta calm down, my dude. I know I'm the one flipping out right now, but you gotta calm down. All right, I'm back. Because (laughs) because we are right there. We are right there. The Cubs, like Max said, are falling off. And we are one game. I am game. pissed off. One game. Granted, the Nationals like refused to freaking lose for some reason. Yeah, they just swept the Cubs, right? And yeah. At Wrigley Field. Here's the what? thing. Here's the thing. What? Okay. Hit me 19 with to 11. Okay. I thought I was seeing a preseason score okay. in the NFL. All right? You <laughs> blow a 7-0 to zero lead against the worst franchise in the MLB today. I would say, Are you kidding me? I would say Not only that, Detroit you is. lose the series? Are you flipping kidding me? Okay, I, I, I hear you, T. I hear what you're saying. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Okay, I see what you're making for dinner. Okay? I want winners. I know. I know that. But look, I understand the, hey, if we can't beat the Marlins, how the hell are we going to beat the Dodgers? Exactly my point. But that's the thing about sports, man. That's the thing that makes it special. 
You never know what's going to happen with baseball. It's funny to me, too. Now, yes, as Max can attest to, this pitching staff, for the most part, is absolute trash. I am absolutely done with Nick Pavetta. Absolutely. Uh, look, I, I, had, I had high hopes for him. I think you had higher hopes for him than I me. I had higher hopes. I, uh, Nick, your performance against the Giants a couple weeks ago, your performance against the Marlins a couple days ago, buddy. It's stupid. My I think dude. he's done, Chris. Yeah, I think so, too. I still have some hopes for Velasquez. Here, you'll think this is hilarious. I know I'm kind of just tearing the steering wheel out of your hands, but just listen to me. I'm hyped up. I've had two cups of coffee, and it's only 8, 8, 8 10. <laughs> you want to know how naive of a sports fan I am? Do you want to know? I do want to know. Tell me. <laughs> oh Vince boy. Velasquez got through two innings of that Mar- Marlins game. With two strikeouts and gave up no hits. I'm like, huh. He's an outrage. Maybe this could be a quality start. Vinny, you're looking good so far. It's only two innings. It's only two innings. And then he gets pulled two and a first and gives up. I, I got the stats real quick. Hold all on. Right, right. Hold on. He, he, goes, he goes two and a first and gives up seven runners and f- gives up five hits and seven earned runs. Got, got Ooh, one out in the third inning. And then they put in Juan Nicasio. I don't know what this is about. They put in Juan yeah, Nicasio. He, he threw one pitch and got hurt. Yeah, he threw one okay, pitch. Okay, I missed that. Yeah. I missed that. One pitch? Yeah, he went on the IL afterwards. Hey, play the thing. <laughs> play the thing. Uh, just, Juan Nicasio, come on. Uh, just, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Dude, uh, you can't find it? It's no, okay. It's whatever. But like like Ricky Bo said, we had a 7 nothing lead. In a game where a position player pitched. That's un- I've never heard that before. And this is a team that's supposed to have playoff aspirations. Max, you've been trying to get me back on the bandwagon for the longest of times now. Okay? It's not working anymore. It, matter of fact, it's not going to work anymore. You don't think so? I'm done. I'm done. I'm officially done. I think, listen, I'm gonna, I, I, have to, I have to give respect to my man JT Romuto. He's the one guy today that I wanted to point out to you guys. Threw three yes. runners out the plate last okay. night. He's been Mr. Consistent all season long from behind the plate. Uh, and you know what? His average and his slugging percentage is on base. It's all, you know, across the board pretty solid. He was our only all-star this year. So, to me, this kind of falls on – I don't want to say all of it falls on Gabe Kapler, but, I mean, like you said last show, Reese Hoskins shouldn't be in the leadoff spot. I mean, mm-hmm. the guy's hitting two thirty three. I don't know what he was thinking. I get it. He he gets on base. He sees a lot of pitches. But man, he's got twenty five home runs. He's he's your cleanup hitter. And, and, and if he's not your cleanup hitter, like, put him at your five. And speaking, hole, put him, you know? and, and speaking of Gabe Kapler, what's the what's the situation with uh, Cesar Hernandez and Gabe Kapler? Like, what's what with the confusion? I don't because from see. The re- from the reports that I heard, um, Cesar Hernandez was told that he wasn't getting benched, but he that he was getting rest. But then Gabe Kapler goes to the media and says that he's punishing him for a non hustle play. Okay, now we have confusion. Yeah, I think the player, Cesar, thought that it was just a regular scheduled day off yesterday. That, that's how you start turmoil, Gabe. And then, yeah, Gabe said that it was actually uh, not true, that he was actually getting benched. So, again, I don't know. Cesar's not a great player, but, I mean, hell, he's hitting 283 this season. I want him in, this, in the lineup. I know exactly. he didn't run. But, again, look big picture here. Reese Hoskins came up and hit a two-run home run anyway, right? So it didn't come back to hurt us in the game. We just didn't score. We scored three. We scored two runs and we lost three to two. So that the reason we didn't win, I mean, Nola had that one bad inning uh, on Sunday against the Marlins. But the reason we didn't win that game is because our hitters didn't come up. Granted, Bryce Harper on paternity leave. His wife had a baby, as we all Congratulations, know. Congratulations, Bryce. Congratulations. But but again, like he wasn't in the lineup. He's been our hottest hitter, and he comes back last night. And he, what does he do? He hits a home run. So yeah. again, I get the frustration with the inconsistency and the losing to bad teams. I, I but just, we're right there, Chris. One game out of the wild card spot. Yeah, yeah I, I, even though I'm r- screaming about this team, it's because I care. I, st- I do still believe in this team. Something I am a little worried about is, uh, you want to know who the Cubs next series is against? The Mets. The Mets. And if trends keep going, the Cubs are going to keep losing, which is good, but the Mets are going to keep winning. Yeah, look, look on the bright side. One of those teams has to lose each day, right? They, they do. They do. So, the, yes. so we're, what are we, one game back of the Cubs? We are one game back of the Cubs. So we're Mets fans and we're, tonight. And we're one game ahead of the Mets. Makes me sick to say that, but we're Mets fans tonight. 
Yeah, but no, but yeah. I yeah. mean, listen, the teams that are ahead of us have to get behind us. And you know right what? now, the Cubs are ahead of us. You know what? You're right. We are ahead of the Mets. If if we can beat the Pirates, I know we. I Take know what care you of business said, tonight. I know what you said a couple days ago. I didn't realize how bad the Pirates are. Because you said the Pirates have been one of the worst teams since the All-Star break. Yes. Um, and, you know, I, I took that in. I was like, oh, yeah, I, I can believe it. I didn't realize how bad they actually were. It's ridiculous. Very and bad. we almost blew it last night. Listen. Look, Hector, the, Hector. Hector. I get it. I know I'm there. I, T, I don't just, even start. Don't <laughs> even start. <laughs> He's easily been our best relief pitcher this year. I am pissed Alvarez off. Alvarez has been great for us, too. Even though he had it, didn't he come in last night and get let up? Who, who, who let? The, we were up. I think I can bring that up for you real quick. Just give me a second. But it, it just yeah. We were losing four two at one point, and I'm, I want to know who gave up the two runs to make it four two. Because I know Alvarez came in. Jared Hughes was in there as well. But T, I gotta <laughs> tell you, I know that you're out in this season. Yep. But I'm done. in your opinion, who gets? Into the playoffs. I know you know the Nationals are playing well in that wild card spot. Mm-hmm. Are you liking the Cubs? Are you liking the Mets? Like, is there any? What team are you? It stands it's, out. To I you? think it's going to be a fight between the Cubs and the Mets for that second wild just card. Just just those two. To the end, I, no yeah, Brewers. I think the Na- Brewers are kind of out yeah, of it. Uh, yeah, I think the Brewers are out of it, and I think the Nationals pretty much have that um, that first wild card spot locked up. They, they're <laughs> so, up four games over the second so spot. Like, the Cubs. So like, yeah, I, I just and the simple fact that those teams are a whole lot more competitive than the Phillies. I mean, yes, the Phillies have the talent that they can compete with those teams, but the problem is they're not competing with those teams. The inconsistency, as we've stated, on these microphones time and time and time and time again, they keep creeping right back up. And it also doesn't help when you have a manager who really doesn't know what he's doing. I'm usually not a person that calls for somebody's head, but to heck with it. It's early in the morning. I'm tired. I'm (laughs) grumpy. I want Gabe Kaplan's head. Traffic sucks. (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> to answer your question, Max, uh, Vargas gave up four. Oh, he gave so up it was four it was Vargas. But I don't in. think Vargas gave up all those runs. I think he, he those base he, runners were charged to him. But I don't think he was the one who gave up the hits. Who came in after him? Does it have the box score there? Uh, Alvarez. Alvarez. He, he came in for um, only uh, point one. Did he give up any hits or runs? No, nope, no hits, no runs. No just walk. one walk. Oh, one walk. Okay. One walk, and then Hughes came in for. Uh, uh, Two, two-thirds of an inning, Yeah, gave up one hit, gave up a walk, and two strikeouts. Well, okay. I mean... Listen, I think we found some pieces in our bullpen that can help us down the stretch, Alvarez being one of them, even though he hasn't been great as of late. But I still think we can rely on him. Jared Hughes as well was a good pickup. Matt Morin? Matt Morin it, it might be my second favorite pitcher right now. <laughs> right on the team. We don't really have many options to choose from. No, so, no. Outside of Aaron Nola. But, but, but like, like, you yeah. know, we got... A couple of guys in the bullpen we can rely on in big games down the stretch that I think we all have confidence in for the most part. And to be honest with you, it's it's surprising because it was kind of more of a makeshift bullpen that we you know acquired around the trade deadline. And even into August, you know, even though the waiver people who clear through waivers, I know there's no non waiver or excuse me, I know there's no waiver trade deadline anymore. Mm-hmm. No, nope. but we did acquire a couple of good arms. The only problem is our starters, right? Our starting pitching. Outside of Aaron Nola Vargas, he's doing enough to keep us in ball games, exactly. right? Yes. That's all we can ask for yes. out of him. But Smiley, he's been roughed up his last couple of outings. Um, at Flynn over the weekend, he didn't pitch poorly. Six innings, two runs. So he's, no. he, he kept us in the game. But, again, you can't you can't bank on that every time out there for him. No, not at all. And Velasquez, I think he's got a lot of ability and a lot of promise. And we've been saying that for years now. But I think we all know what he is. He's a four or five in a in a good rotation, I should say. <laughs> I think you're being a little generous. In a good rotation, he's a back end starter. Okay. I'll, I'll put back the, end. I, I, Listen, I, hold on. Let me let me finish. Real yeah, quick. sure, sure. He's got the ability. We've seen him go deep into ball games a couple of times, yeah. and when he's on, he's on. But again, like you said, over the weekend in Miami, when that fastball is not getting located well, it could get hit out of the ballpark in a second, and that's what I think he's been struggling with this season. <coughs> Uh, well, I'll put it this way for Velasquez. I definitely have a smidgen of more hope for him than, uh, like, Nick Pavetta or Zach. What? Pavetta I'm done with. Eflin, I, I still have – there's still a bit of hope for him. And I think Velasquez is above the two of the, those guys, but that's not really saying much. And then something I wanted to address to you, T. Yes. 
I know Hector Neris is definitely not your favorite <sighs> pitcher. That's Max one said. Bunch of low lifes. <laughs> Oh, now, oh, now Hector, you, come on, he's been decent. All now, season now for you us. find it. <laughs> now you find it. He had a couple of hiccups down the road. Yeah, this is only his fifth blown save of the year. Okay. Look, look, that's better than last year and the year before. Listen, Just, I'll tell you what. I was watching that game last night, and the home runs we hit were surprising as all hell. But oh, yeah. I wasn't surprised when Nerys gave up that homer to Josh okay, Bell. No. I mean, you know it was coming. You know we weren't going to win you that did. game easily. You, you <laughs> did. But. Look, not everyone can have a Bradledge year where it's a j- perfect. Okay? What? What? D- enlighten Shut me. Your yeah. Whatever. <laughs> one thing we I'll, can, I'll mute your mic. One, <laughs> one thing we can point out is it's it's pretty obvious that even getting Keuchel or Kimbrell back a couple months ago when we had the opportunity wouldn't have really put us over the edge. It would have it would have taken 18 mil out of our pockets. Uh, but at the same time, listen. Uh, we need to find starting pitching because the problem is we don't have any in our minor league system. And it's not like you can just go out and buy everybody. You can't buy everything. The Braves right now, with their system that they have in the farm mm-hmm. and their lineup from top to bottom right now, they got their start, or their, I should say their young stars locked up that for, for the long haul here. we got to figure out a way to compete. And I don't really have any idea. I guess you could look into trading a couple of players like Reese Hoskins. Name's been floated around out there. For some pitching, uh, man, man. like because yeah, because guys, listen. I we, mean, who are you going to put at first then? I don't know. You know, it's, I mean, it's tough. But I, yeah, I guess you could look to look to free agency now. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Again, like I said, you can't buy everybody. We just gave three thirty to Bryce. All right. Yeah. The, ben, the, the truck of money is going to run out eventually, and a lot of people are calling for Anthony Rendon from the Nats, but he's going to demand big time money, over three hundred mil again, or close to it at least, because that dude is. A, is a great talent. Yeah, he is. Uh, he frustrates the hell out of me every time we play the Nats. Ugh. But but yeah, th- this is definitely a predicament that the Phillies are in. I know you're done, T. But yep. come on, look. This if they can make it, it'll be the first time in what math eight years. This is the only thing first I'm going to be since the, since the la- since the last time we made the playoffs. This is the only thing I'm going to be looking at from henceforth to the end of the year. I want to throw it seventy yards to Deshaun. That's the only thing I want to look at. At this oh, point, look, look, we're right there with you, but we still, we still, we're, we'll, we got open we're minds still, to you. We're not, we're not straight roading it to the Eagles season. Open minds you, here. You are absolutely correct. We can't straight road it to the Eagles season, but I'm tired of the inconsistency. And that's um, fair. I, I and agree I'm tired, with you. and I, I don't agree with the management. I don't. A lot of fans. Are just are just or I should say have and, the same exact opinion as you do. And just uh And the rumor I know there's rumors out there that um Gabe Kavler is supposedly gonna be safe at the end of the year. I don't see it that way. I would I would start heating up that seat. There's yeah, there's no way there, that's baloney. I you know, if Gabe Kavler Tanner makes the playoffs, that, but, can you really fire him at the end of the season? Maybe <laughs> probably oh, not. It'll probably save us behind for one year. Probably but if, not, but, but if the team starts off horrible and the same inconsistencies <laughs> pop up then you need to do something at the managerial position. Yeah. And I, think, that. I think that Gabe Kapler as a whole, uh, you know, throughout this whole season, uh, hasn't been the best. We all know that, right? He's made some, some, made some questionable decisions. And Pull your head I, your do, I do put some of the blame on him for this team. Oh, right? definitely. Definitely have to put some of the blame. I don't think he's got the right mindset in the locker room. He's not old school baseball, right? He's this new up and coming analytical mind, and he's really Which mellow is not a and really bad likes to, thing. It's not, but at the same time, you need oh, good for you. You need like a. Uh, I'm trying to think of an example, like a, like a Joe Girardi, somebody with a winning pedigree that knows uh, how to win, who's been there before. Gabe Kapler, he's never been there before, right? No. And, and as a as a player, he was okay. I mean, he had a major league career that lasted multiple years, but he was never a superstar player. No. So, uh, I'm trying to figure out like what he brings. Does he? He doesn't bring that pedigree, right? He doesn't bring that old school knowledge. He doesn't bring that uh, winning mindset. That like he has no track record of it. And I get maybe because he's mellow and he he thinks everything through. He's not hot headed, <laughs> you know. Sometimes I mean, that that can go well with the GM and, and and John Middleton. I mean, every manager starts somewhere. I mean, once upon a time, why am I drawing a blank on his name? Um, manager for Cleveland. Terry his name. Francona. I, I, I'm pretty sure his first job as a manager was with the Phillies. Terry Francona. He, yeah, he was with the Phillies. Yeah, and um, I mean, I, I obviously I didn't watch the Phillies at that time because I wasn't born. Um, but I've heard I heard stories about how 
you know, he did such a terrible job, and he talked all this trash on Philly, and this and that, and, and then blah. he left, and then he won World Series, right? And no, I, you're right. Yeah, 100%, I 100% yeah. agree. Hey, every, every manager starts somewhere. I just feel like for the situation we're in right now, you know, that up and coming, trying to get to the World Series in the next couple of years, I don't think Gabe Kapler is the right. I mean, Gabe Kapler would be a great manager for the Miami Marlins, right? I think he would be a great manager for the Miami Marlins. Because we he, need a guy he's that's definitely, he's definitely more. Uh, he he definitely has a more open mind when it comes to playing young talent. Because I I do uh, I also think that's the thing about some older managers is um they they may not put their trust into young guys. I don't know. This was, might right. just me be speculating, but that's just my. I don't know. These guys need to be held accountable, and I don't think I think people. Have, have gotten away with things this year. I mean, we look at Gene Sergera not running out balls. We look at Cesar Hernandez not running out balls. If this is Charlie Manuel back in 2008, these guys, like, he would pull Jimmy Rollins, who you could argue is better than any player we have, maybe besides Bryce Harper, that we have on this team right now. And he would pull him right out of the game and put him on the bench. Yep. I mean, guys on yeah. this team need to be held accountable, and, and they've really gotten away with everything this year. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's part of the reason why I think Gabe Kapler hasn't done the best of jobs you know, managing this team so far. I mean, I, I know because there's also there was also those stories about like uh, last year with Carlos Santana losing his mind on a TV because like I think it was Scott Kingery and Reese Hoskins were playing Fortnite in the in the clubhouse or yeah. something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you Carlos know, Santana the, slammed the TV, I think, or something like ex- that. Yeah, and then I think well, Carlos Bryce, Santana on a one one on one side note here. What the hell? <laughs> we paid him three years, sixty million dollars. He was horrible. He hit like 220, and now he started the All-Star game as a first baseman this, this year. This is some bullshit. I mean, see, am I wrong here? You I mean, the wrong. guy is an All-Star caliber I, player right now. It's the pressure of Philadelphia. He goes to Cleveland. They're not nearly as much on his back. Uh, Cleveland's, I think, in the playoff team right now. If I uh, uh, let me look, let me they're look. in the playoff race. I guess you know would be a better they, way to they put hold it. the top. They hold the top wild card spot right now. Yeah, see, there so. And then again, there's uh, more talent on that team. Also, probably. I, th- I think Washington has pretty much secured the top wild card spot. By the way, unless they fall off, a cl- I mean they're four games they're up. They're four over games the up. So yeah, and I don't see and, them dropping any games. And you know, at, at, Atlanta's out of the question. Like, mm, yeah. there's they're they're going to the playoffs. Yeah. So our agree. only hope is Chicago dropping off. We need to come through in the series against the Mets. That is going to. Make or break this season. So I think we need some luck involved, Chris. You, you know we're not gonna. You know we're not, we, some we keep, Andrew luck. We keep saying we, <laughs> we keep to saying we need to go on this big run. The run probably is not gonna happen. If it was gonna happen, probably would have happened already. So what we really need yeah, to is just got, stay the pace, right? That we're yeah, at right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also get a little luck on our side. Sometimes teams need luck to get in. Yeah, you know? but that's the problem. We can't go on that big run. We can't good win twelve out of fifteen. Good teams need to rely on luck in other teams. Yeah, this We're, is not a good team that because we have to rely on other teams to drop off. The position that we put ourselves in calls for that right now. I believe. I think we really do. If the Cubs keep their pace right now, the season ended. They would be that second wild card right now. So we really do need them. Hopefully, they play a lot of road games because we looked at that a couple of weeks ago. They're not good on the road. So I could look that up. Hopefully they play a lot of road games coming up, and you know we get some luck on our side. We're not playing uh, too tough of opponents coming down the stretch here. I mean the Mets, I get it; they're they've been hot as of late. But the Pirates, this series, hopefully we can win. And you know at this point we can't expect sweeps. I mean, like I said last show, I hope we get sweep Marlins. Look how that turned out. So um, we all know how inconsistent this team is, and hopefully at the end, that's all we can do is just hope for a little luck and hopefully. I want winners. No big time player gets injured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because injuries do happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, nah, they got quite a few home games coming up. Oh, uh, great. <laughs> but, they, but guess what? They play the, the Mets tonight, and that game is, uh, or the, the series is in City Field. So yes, it that's is. That's on the road. Yes, it is. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. All right, I, I still think you should buy in. T, you should buy in. Nope. Come, we're right. Though. It's one game. Nope. It's just f- the fun playoff stretch here. Even if we don't get in, it's the uh, hey. the fun of being a fan, right, Chris? Exactly. And you also never know what will happen. Nope. Maybe Clayton Kershaw will forget how to pitch. Nope. All right, see, I wanted to bring this up to you because I know you're a big football mind over there. So don't for the hurt. casual fan, now we're transitioning here on topics. Right. For the casual fan, if you, you look you look at the schedule, there's 12 days left until the season starts, right? Okay, 12 days left. So if you're a casual Ooh, fan, you're sitting there. yeah! The fourth preseason game, what what should people be looking for if they're just tuning in? And, you know, even after that, looking for cuts, players that can make the roster, players that, and that's the main you thing. know, stand out. You know, what that's, looking for that's the main fan. thing you kind of want to look for in the, in the fourth preseason game. Um, you're not going to see any starters whatsoever. You might 
pop, you might, and that's a strong might. Um, see a starter or two out there Maybe they just You know Knock some rust off But for the most part That fourth preseason game Is about seeing What your depth look like And you know What the young guys look like And you know Getting them some reps And um, you know Get them Showcasing their skills on film Maybe not for the team That they're currently playing for But for a team That could possibly Pick them up um, And put them on On their practice squad So you know That's the main point Of the fourth preseason game I still find it entertaining Because you know, I'm still trying to, you know, look at the depth of the Philadelphia Eagles and, you know, and oh boy. Oh boy. I got I got to address this. Let's do it. All right. That third preseason game, I'm terrified of our defensive backs. I am utterly terrified because I literally seen it's like it's like watching last season and the last previous seasons on repeat. These defensive backs cannot, I repeat, Cannot cover a receiver. They're so bad at covering receivers, they can't even cover their mouths when they cough. All right? Michael Floyd. Good one. Michael Floyd, who played for the Baltimore Ravens, lit a fire on Hawkins. All right? He was he was dominating him like a petulant child. And it was absolutely horrendous. These defensive backs scare me. They really, really really scare me and it doesn't help the fact that they play so far off of the line of scrimmage listen you want to okay you guys keep bringing up you want to put pressure on the quarterback yes pressure bus pipes you want to put pressure on the quarterback that's the main thing of a Jim Swartz scheme is to put pressure on the quarterback but at the same time you have to also force that quarterback to hold on to that football to allow the pressure to get there if you keep playing five to seven yards off the right receiver and they keep allowing free release, guess what? Those two, those two three yard hitches, those five yard outs, those five yard ends, those slant routes, they're open. Unless you drop a linebacker up in there. And to be honest with you, our linebackers aren't really covering linebackers. The one good covering linebacker we did have in Jordan Hicks, he was released via free agency. See, this is why I like you having the passion that you have about this topic. Because Chris and I, I'm sure you can relate to this. I turn the game on. They're losing 20 to nothing immediately. Trace McSorley's tearing us up. I'm right. like, all right, you know what? I'm, I'm out of here. I'm going to go watch the Phils. Right? <laughs> but, oh, gosh. But like, I, I, see, I see your point here because, listen, I was watching that game, and Michael Floyd, who is a vet yep. playing, I mean, this guy's tearing us up. Yep. I'm like, this guy's ancient. What, what the hell is he doing tearing our D-backs up? Right. And like you said, the guys play far off the line of scrimmage. Maybe I don't know if that's part of the scheme or maybe because they don't feel comfortable being up front and pressuring the guy. I, I hear so them. many I hear so many different things. I, I hear sometimes it's the scheme, sometimes it's the play call, and then I hear that sometimes it's the players. I don't know what it is, and at this point I don't care. It needs to be fixed. Period. It does. I'm just so anxious to see Carson play, man. It's been so long and he didn't play at all in the preseason, understandably. Uh, but uh, yeah. I am Give really looking what forward they to that. See. Give people Case what Keenum, they see. Case Keenum, the starter, by the way, week one. Last time he was in Philly. <laughs> I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm so terrified. Hey, 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 put some respect on Case Keenum. You know that the, <laughs> the Eagles are only an eight-point favorite. I ain't scared. Which surprises me. I ain't hey, scared only, Case man, Keenum. Only? I think they should be a bigger favorite. That's a, that's a home field advantage and then some. Uh, yeah, I, I thought that would be a bigger hey, favorite. Mm -mm. Hey, you never that's, know. That's pretty much Case, a good ballpark. Case might walk into that Lincoln Financial Field with fire in his eyes. Like, I'm going to get you for what you did to me. You embarrassed me. It's ridiculous. And he might be like, hey, Red, Redskins, the four players I can name, let's do this. Yeah. Man, that's ludicrous. Now, to, who do you expect to play in this fourth preseason game? I mean, I guess you could say Josh McCown because he's only been in, the, yeah. in camp or whatever yeah. about a week. Speaking of which, yo, man, the simple fact that Josh McCown got up to that preseason game, Josh McCown's only been there for three to four days, and the fact that he was able to literally just about bring them back before the game was um, ruled over via the storm, that is a heck of an impression. Like, seriously, the fact that he barely knows the playbook, and I'm hearing him going up to the line of scrimmage, you know, Ringo, Ringo, Ringo. When you hear that, that's usually um, the quarterback telling the protection, hey, slide to the right. You know, he's changing the protection. He's changing plays. He's killing plays. He's telling receivers what to do. I'm seeing little hand signals. And I'm like, wow, that is impressive. For somebody who just got here, picking up an offense like that and being able to the, the, first off, the impressive throws, because to be honest with you, the offensive line did not block very well. They really did not pick up the blitz that very well. Um, 
They were easily um, they were easily penetrated on stunts up front by the defensive line of the Ravens. Like it was absolutely incredible the way he was able to handle that pressure and being able to showcase um, what he can do, but also what some of the receivers can do as well. I, I he really impressed me. I mean, I would hope for Josh McCown to have that skill, considering he's been on eleven different teams. Yeah, True. yeah, but when you were on eleven different teams, there's got to be something wrong with you. Yeah. I was impressed by McCown. He had two hey, touchdown passes. Hey, yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, no, no. I'm joking because yeah, hey, Josh. I like what I saw out of Josh McCown. Yes, everything that I want out of a backup quarterback, yes. which is not that's not an insult. It's not. I know it sounds bad, but he's everything that I want in a backup quarterback. I agree. I mean, he ain't, he ain't no Nick Foles, but <sighs> what if Josh McCown? Um, no, hypothetically speaking, here had to come in for. You know, a couple of games or a playoff run. How confident are you with the talent we have around them? Uh, now, for a couple, okay, of, calm down. <laughs> yeah, for for a couple of games, I, I'd feel a little bit better. Playoff run, we ain't going that far. No, no, he doesn't have the Foles magic. In nah, him. once upon a time, we said the same thing about Nick Foles. No, Foles. then again, I also said that too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we yeah. listen too. We get, we're definitely going to have three quarterbacks on this team, and you expect Cody Kessler to be cut? I assume. Yes, yeah. Cody Kessler's gone. He the man literally threw two passes and was benched. Okay, so you're saying Wentz obviously started, and then McCown the backup, and then Clayton Thorson is going to be the third string. Or yeah, that's what you know. What like. let's 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 talk about this right now. Um, of course, all of us in the group text message, um, Tanner Texan, you know, giving us some ideas for the show, and he came up with an interesting scenario with the retirement of Andrew Luck, which we we, we will get to eventually. That's so unfortunate. Um, he proposed that we trade Nate Sudfeld to the Colts now. My whole thing is this, and this is just my personal opinion. Um, while Nate Sutfeld, okay, he has showcased some talent, the issue with that is Nate Sutfeld doesn't have enough film to warrant a team being desperate enough to trade for him. Now, he brought up the point that, you know, the Colts are a playoff contending team and they have all these pieces and, you know, they're going to try to compete and things like that. The thing about it is Nate Sutfeld really doesn't have enough repertoire to, to warrant a team really trading for him. you got to remember, quarterbacks are always going to be a necessity in the NFL, so you're always going to be able to snatch something for them. But I just don't see any value in Nate Sudfeld. I see them more or less going the route of possibly tanking the season and going after a quarterback like Trevor Lawrence. Hey, you never know about Jacoby Brissett. Well, here, here <laughs> Chris, that's a great point. And I th- I've seen Jacoby Brissett play, and like I mentioned in the group text, I think Jacoby Brissett's a fine quarterback. I've seen him play when he when Luck was out that season. He played pretty well. And okay. listen, there, I, I think there's too much talent on this Colts team to really tank this whole season. Their defense is good. Their O-line's one of the best in the league. They got a good Quit couple Nelson. tailbacks, Naheem Hines and Marlon Mack back Quit there. Quit Nelson, their guard is a monster. Yeah, so right? I, I just don't see them tanking. But again, their, their chances of winning the division, no. obviously a lot slim. Uh the AFC South is way too competitive. That's a great oh, yeah, there, with man. the Houston Texans it's, it's, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Their chances of making it very slim. And, and again, the Titans, who a lot of people don't even give them any credit for, they really don't even pay attention to the Titans. I feel like no one really cares about them. I think, <laughs> I think uh, they're gonna. No, no, no. That's not a knock against the Titans. It's just they haven't really been. That's exactly a good team. what it sounded like. They haven't really been a, a great team. Uh, a bunch of low life the past the past few years. <laughs> Not really nationally televised, you know, so just, you know, the casual fan turns on the TV and it's like, you see, they see the Patriots Steelers, you know, things like that. Mm. Uh, but I think the Titans are my low key sneak pick to win that division. Mm. Okay. I think the Titans really? are. Really? Over Houston? I think it's over Houston. Over, yeah. I do. I, I think. Man, Houston, speaking of Houston, that's another thing that we got into. Real quick before we get on the clowny stuff, okay. I want to point out no one's going to trade for Nate Sudfeld because he's not that good. And I could say that brutally, you know, I'm brutally honest right. because this is a podcast. Nate Sudfeld's not good. Who the hell wants him to be your starting quarterback or your backup quarterback? See, I'm not going to say he's not good. I'd rather have McCown over him. I, I, hell, I might even rather have Clayton Thorson. Wow. Uh, for what I saw in that first preseason game. Okay, calm down. I get he <laughs> broke his wrist, but but God damn, what the hell? I don't <laughs> Hey, okay. I got more film on Clayton Thorson now than I do of Nate Sudfeld. Okay. Before I say what I'm about to say, I just want to uh, address that. I make fun of John Gruden a lot. But (laughs) (laughs) don't you dare play. Don't you dare. Because 
Give me a green right slot. <laughs> yeah, Spider yeah, yeah. two Y banana. Spider two Y banana. Okay. <laughs> no, I saw a clip of you know how he used to have his uh, you know quarterback camp right, show, right? And you know Carson Wentz was on it, and you know Patrick Mahomes was on it, and mm-hmm. all these guys. Um, I watched this clip where he sat down with. <laughs> I know how this is going to sound, but I have a point to what I'm about to say. He was sitting down with Case Keenum back when he was a college prospect. Mm -hmm. So this is before, you know, the Vikings and all that. And he's sitting down and, you know, he's he's, John Gruden's making this point like, you know, does the draft really matter? Because he he made like, you know, uh, he, he made some reference to can you even tell me the last quarterback that was taken first overall at the time it was Sam Bradford. Mm. Yeah, and, gosh, oh, gosh. and um, you know, he was making a point that, and this is my point: someone will believe in you Absolutely. if you show if you show that you have what it takes. I agree. With someone that. will believe in you. I'm not saying there definitely is someone like that with Nate Sudfeld, but there might be someone out there who saw him in college and who's seen a small snippet of him in an NFL action. I agree with that. Who might be like, hey, a, a six-round pick and listen, for Nate Sudfeld. Why and, not? And listen, I, I completely agree with your statement. Um, I can bring up the fact that when Sam Bradford was here and... Um, Teddy Bridgewater <laughs> suffered that horrific injury, and we were able to fleece the Vikings and trade him for that first round pick that we used to trade up to get Carson Wentz. The issue with it is, the issue with that is, uh, the issue is what? Bradford had a track record. <laughs> Bradford was a first overall pick. Bradford set all those records at Oklahoma. Yeah. Though Bradford was only a 7 and 9, 8 and 8 quarterback. Probably the Vikings viewed that as okay, you know, he was he had some unfortunate circumstances and things like that. I personally think Sam Bradford is a bust, and he has proven that. Never been to the playoffs, never led a team to the playoffs. At most, been an eight and eight quarterback. That is like the most forgettable Eagle season for me too, where Sam Bradford was our starting quarterback. That was a horrible season. I, I couldn't that tell was. you a thing. That let happened. me tell you something. That was around the time that I was in love with Nick Foles. All right. And the fact that we <laughs> traded Nick Foles away for Sam Bradford, let me tell you something, all right? I, I destroyed my room. <laughs> the day that trade went down, I destroyed my room. You were, yeah, but, that, but then we made up for it when we traded him away and started to win. Y- y- yes. So it all made up for it in a long run. I agree. Run, so, um, right? I and I jumped for, for joy. Um, <laughs> when I, we I signed him again? Hallelujah. <laughs> when we signed him again? That's right. <laughs> I, I, I think I already told you guys a sto- very quick story. I know you don't like these, Max, but very quick story. Once upon a time, I was in some store. This All was right, after... we're quitting this one art now. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, no, I, 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 I just happened to see, and this was after we got rid of Shady and Nick Foles. I saw Shady Eagles jerseys and Nick Foles Eagles jerseys, and I, I just go over to check them out, see, see how much they are. They were twelve dollars, twelve dollars. I hear you for a Nick Foles jersey and a Shady jersey, yep. and I was like, you know what? I really liked Nick Foles, and I got a Nick Foles jersey before he won a Super Bowl. With it's Eagles. funny to me too. You know, anyway. it paid out in the long run. Because uh, now yeah, you exactly. can wear any kid, any adult, anybody from any age group, any time down the road, uh, can wear do, a Foles do you jersey. See a, f- fit right in. When you look at a Foles jersey, do you really go, eh? No, he I won don't. a Super Bowl for it. anyway. That, I just wanted to say that. Um, but before we get into the Jadavian Clowney stuff, mm-hmm. is there, okay, I know it's very wishful thinking, okay. but is there anything on the, like, say we go with this Colts thing that Tanner brought up. All right. Is there anyone in that depth chart who opens your eyes for the Colts? Because if I'm looking to trade Nate Sudfeld, I want edge rusher depth or linebacker. You're probably not going to get any You're good pro- player. No. no, and that's the whole probably thing. Not. Probably not. You're not. Not for Nate Sudfeld. And that's the whole thing. We get a like, pick. Get a pick. Right. Six, that's six, the best thing you round. can hope Right. That's the best thing you can hope for um, out of a Nate Sudfeld trade, sadly, mm-hmm. because, like I said, he really doesn't have any value. And I also do, and I'm cool with that because, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, it's Nate Sudfeld. I mean, he's a young guy still. I don't mind going with Josh McCown as our backup. Right, mm-hmm. but here's the problem, and and this is just after I got done knocking Sudfeld. Here's my one thing I will say: he kind of knows the offense. McCown's only going to be here for one year, probably, and Clayton Thorson ready to step into that number two role. I'm questioning that obviously right now. So I think you might have to keep him around for maybe a year or two down the road. Maybe. And hell, yeah. if he progresses and gets better, then you never know. We'll see what happens in the future. But right now, I think you just got to keep him around. Yep. All right. 
This Jadavian clown trait. Um, I'm clown. hearing clown. Clown. Well, oh, gosh. Was Jadavian... he clown? <laughs> Jadavian clowny. It's still um, early. It's okay. Yeah, too. I know. Yeah, I know. I've only had one cup of coffee. Uh, I had two. Jadavian two. clowny. You can't tell. <laughs> the the steam is really picking up when there's smoke. There's fire. Um, there's rumors going around that he could be traded any day now. One of the teams involved in that is the Philadelphia Eagles. Now. The Texans do have a need. They, they do have a couple of needs now. They have a need at tackle. Hence, we talked about trading Halapulavati Vitae. Um, they have a need now at running back with Lamar Miller tearing his ACL. We have an abundance of running backs that we can put up for trade. Wendell. Wendell is one of them. <laughs> what the hell? No one in their right mind would do Wendell. Hey. You'd be surprised. Hey. Wendell for the clowny? You might as well. I didn't say just Wendell. Okay. Go yeah. into All that right. meeting and hypnotize him. I didn't say clarify. just Wendell. But, and. Josh Adams. I brought. Hey, sorry. As, I, as much as I don't want to. I, I keep cutting you off. I'm sorry. As much as I don't want to, he, he that could be an option, too. I, I'd rather get rid of those two guys before Corey Clement. But my whole thing is this, and I, I brought this up. Um. A couple of weeks ago, and you guys shot me down about it, but this is something that we need to bring up. Listen, they also, it would probably help them if they added another right receiver to their mix. We have an abundance of receivers. Dude, don't. Do we have a receiver don't. that has one year left on his contract, and I'm not sure if the team is really willing to sign Alshon him Jeffrey? Back. No. I heard about that rumor. No. I think we should trade Alshon. I'll- you say Alshon Jeffrey. I say Nelson Aguilar. But no one's. No, I don't think they're going to do that. Like, it's, if you're the GM of the Texans, depending on how big this headache of Clowney is, would you really straight up just be like, "All right, here's Aguilar for not Clowney"? Not straight up, but of Hell course, no. Not straight up, but of course, there's going to be some draft picks involved. There's going to be some extra players involved. Uh, uh, we need draft picks. That's what if, builds our whole depth the, thing. And we here's need the to thing. Hit and here's I, the thing. You have to think about how their offense is structured. They're, they're a high-powered offense. They want to throw the ball deep. They want intermediate to deep range passes. Hence, DeAndre Hopkins. What Nelson Aguilar will add, he will add an additional speed factor to their offense. Alshon Jeffrey is a good short to intermediate route runner. I, he gets those uh, those 50-50 balls. That's not really what their offense uh, is built around. Okay, but uh, okay, I don't like either of these. <laughs> I don't like the idea of giving up one or the other. But the thing I can see with Alshon Jeffrey is we could just put J.J. Arcega Whiteside there. He's not high enough See, on J.J. Arcega Whiteside. I'm not going to say I'm not high enough. I just feel as though like he's a rookie, and you're putting him now in a position to where he has to succeed on a team with good. Super Bowl aspirations. He's a, he's a, he's a younger version of I don't, Alshon Jeffrey. I, don't, I, I agree with that. And, man, that third preseason game, he showed me some route running skills. Eight catches over 100 yards receiving. That with was, who the hell's thrown to him? Like random dudes that come out of the stands. And his route ball. running skills was some of the best that I've seen from a rookie wide receiver in a nice little while. I'm not, uh, I'm not, listen, I'm not arguing that. All I'm saying is you really want to put the 50 50 balls in the hands of a 22 year old receiver yeah. over okay. somebody who you if know has a track now, record listen, of doing They would do that trade probably. Alshon, I could see a GM doing Alshon for Clowney straight up because Alshon's yeah. still pretty young and he's you, in, on some teams a number one receiver. And have Clowney come in here, the one question mark about him his whole career. Is the draw? Does he want it enough? Yeah, I think. You know, I think. Does Jeff- he have it in him to be that superstar player? We yeah, know he has the talent. I, th- I think Alshon definitely does have the pedigree for just a straight up trade. If you were to do Aguilar, I think you would have to include Vitae. But oh, then, but yeah, that, see, that, but that's but then, a problem. but then I would be like, hey, second round pick the other way. Yeah, if that was the case, if like, that was I would, the case, I would have to get some sort of asset back. And but, I, I, well, and I also just want to ask you this: what's up? You do you do, you go with Aguilar? You you trade him away? Who are you putting in that slot then? Once again, and I still got to I got to show you guys the tape. Actually, the proof. I don't know if you guys seen it during the preseason. God, don't say it like. But they ass. actually showed twelve <laughs> personnel where um who was the second receiver? They they did have Nelson know. Aguilar in the slot, but they also had Zach Ertz lined up outside along with Alshon Jeffrey, and they had Dallas Goddard lining up next to the tackles. You can run 12 personnel with the tight ends that we had. You don't necessarily need a receiver like Nelson Aguilar in this Eagles offense. If you could script a perfect setting and a perfect playmakers on this team, if you can just write down and write out a perfect football team, that would be the Philadelphia Eagles, right? A perfect quarterback, the do-it-all type of quarterback. We got a slot, a perfect slot guy, perfect size and speed in Aguilar. We got a I deep threat, speed on the outside. The dude can just catch bombs all day and run past 
That's every Deshaun defender. Jackson, if you don't know. The <laughs> do it all tight end in Zach Ertz. And the guy can block now, the guy can pick, catch passes, and the go up and get it type wide receiver. I mean, everything is just laid out perfectly. I, I don't want to touch anything on this offense. And the offensive line, I know Vitae is now in there at guard because Brandon Brooks isn't fully healthy yet, obviously, after coming off that torn Achilles mm-hmm. in the uh, in the playoffs last year. But he will be back, hopefully, very shortly. Uh, that's what they say. They say Vitae. God, he's so valuable because, listen, the one year we were on the Super Bowl, Peters was out. He stepped in fine. Left Very, whoa, whoa, whoa. I won't say fine. What they had to do was they had to make some major adjustments. They had to start chipping that edge. Yes, um, that but edge he, rusher. As a, what was he, a second-year player at the time? Yeah. I yeah. mean, man, for yeah. a second-year guy now, in a did, Super Bowl run? Did I mean, he hold? Now, did he hold his own while we went on that Super Bowl run? Yes, absolutely. But pass blocking is not his, good, his thing. It's just not. Yeah, I agree. He's a better road grader. Excellent real great as Not a matter as of fact. athletic, but it's just a bigger body. That's why he's a guard right now. Good for the run blocking yep. ability. And we saw Peters on the outside. We saw Johnson on the outside. I mean, do you really want to touch any of this? I mean, what we really need, or I should say, do you really want to touch any of this offense? I mean, when we could get Clowney, I get it. It would be a significant and upgrade. If you've seen the way our defensive ends are playing and you looked at the depth chart, the, at the names of our defensive ends, um, it really doesn't hurt to add a Jadavian Clowney. It Let's, really We doesn't. really just need to weather the storm with the defense. The, when we won the Super Bowl a couple years ago, we just outscored teams. You say weather the storm now, but then there's going to be a game where you score like over 30 points, and that defense gives up 40 points, and then you're gonna we're going to come back in here. I'm going to say, I told you so. We need some doggone defense up in this piece. We gave and you're just going to sit there, and you're going to accept it. We gave up <laughs> over 500 passing yards to Tom Brady in the Super Bowl and won. Gave up over 30 points. How many times do you we think get, that's going to happen? We score more points. Just score. I mean, I, the, remember the Denver Broncos game the year we won the Super Bowl? We put up like 52. We won 52 that to was three. An or insane my coach game. drilled Just this. score the points. It's my, co- like, my coach drilled this into us. Offense wins games. Defense wins championships. Yeah, All right? I get that what, sound, yeah, but yeah. What, yeah. what won? What ultimately won us? The, won the Philadelphia yeah, Eagles the Super Bowl? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, the greatness the play, of Nick Foles. The, not just on, that. Talking, you know I'm talking, talking about, about the Brandon Graham sack. I know. I know. That was the ultimate play. Brandon that Graham, won who the we Super don't believe Bowl. in. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> that was the play that won that won the Super, the Philadelphia Eagles the Super Bowl ultimately. All right, and those guys are still on this team. True. So I think we're going to be fine. There, okay. There is. Do you I, think if all right, the only way, the only way something bad happens here is an injury, and injuries just happen. You know, you can't control what injuries do. But if you're looking at this team on paper right now, I'm more concerned about the D backs than I am about the line because okay. the line, the, the tackles can get to the quarterback. We've seen Fletcher Cox do it before, and Malik Jackson as well. Timmy Jernigan's back on this team, right? Mm-hmm. Vinny Curry's back as well. I just feel like the D backs are, you know, a bigger question mark than the defensive line. Is. All right. Uh, and then I know I'm kind of just changing the subject, but there's still a small part of me that is concerned about Carson Wentz. I know he's healthy. I know he's looking good in practice. But like you said a couple days ago, he is kind of the biggest question mark on this team. And that, oh, for like, sure. Because like, sure. I, I, know, I, I know everything is saying that the Eagles are the favorite for the division and all this and all that. But that's with Nick Foles. Or <laughs> Carson Wentz. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. He didn't mean to do I, it. He no, didn't mean to do I it. I didn't mean to do it. I didn't mean to do it. I just, you That's know. stupid. I just have the legend on my mind. Yeah, just. Um, but. You I, big dummy. Because I'm, com- I'm still not confident that he can play a whole season. I, until I see it. You I'm, have. I'm, I'm, you have seen it. 2016 is rookie year. You have. Yeah. How many years ago was that? Don't before, matter. All, before all those injuries. It's true. But, but you've before seen it. Before all those injuries. But you've seen it. Before all those injuries. But you've seen it. And Bef- that's the whole point. Before he screwed up his leg and broke his back. Okay? Stop poking the dog on bear. What, what, why did Andrew Luck retire? Please tell me. Andrew Luck retired because injuries. the injuries caught up to him. Yep. And also, he's a person that's made over $90 million. So at this point, why does he have to risk his body even more? You're not wrong. And no. I completely agree with in, his in decision. In all seriousness, though, what if once just said, all right, I'm going to retire for that? Funny part is, I, uh, I, was actually, I actually saw an article by Marcus Hayes in the Philadelphia Inquirer about that. And I got so pissed off. When I see that, because I'm like, please don't plant that idea. If that happened, I think I think I would just retire as a fan. <laughs> I can't uh, me and Carson are gonna retire together. <laughs> hang, hang up your custom Eagles jersey in your room. Oh wait, no, that's T. Was that a, was that a shot at me? 
Was that a really? Sh- was that was that really a shot at me? That was cute. T, I'm just wondering who is Thud. That, that, Never heard was of. Was that like a wise ass comment? No. no, I'm being dead serious. Never heard of him. <laughs> hmm. No, but about this Andrew Luck retirement, it's so unfortunate. But I, you know, I'm also happy for the guy just because he he can live his life now and not have to worry about the stress of. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it together, professional, <laughs> professional. Um, he doesn't have to worry about the stre- stress. It's an outrage. All right, guys, just, stress just of, so you know. Stress of the football season. The, the, All right, Chris, the, I think it's about time to shut it down. The filter, no, no, the no, filter no, no, on no, Max's no, no, mic no. came off. That was no, we, hey, we still got 10 minutes. We started late, <laughs> and we are going the hour. <laughs> but No, no I... I, I it's unfortunate, the Colts fans' reaction, but I also think it's a natural reaction just because... This is your guy who was supposed to be he, – he took the reins from one of the best quarterbacks of all time, Peyton Manning. He did. And he was – he looked amazing. Yes, he did. He is such a talented quarterback. And it's so – And think about that draft class. That was Andrew Luck. That was Robert Griffin the third. I think Ryan Tannehill also came out in that draft. And Man. then in the third round, you have Russell Wilson and you have Nick Foles. The crazy part is the third rounders are the only ones that's got Super Bowls out of that draft class, which I think is hilarious. Nick Foles, man. But anyway, but, yeah, yeah, that and you know, and it's unfortunate. But when you lose the love for something, then why should you continue doing it? Exactly. And if the injuries keep catching up, and if your body is hurting, and you feel as though your body, um, you're at risk of, you know, your body just not doing what it's supposed to do, then look, you need to walk away from it. And I'm not mad at him for that. Andrew Luck doesn't know the fans anything. All right? So, look. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Max just showed me a picture of a fan. And you know what? I got something to say. <laughs> I got something to say about you so-called NFL Indianapolis Colts fans that booed Andrew Luck when the news broke. I all am right? pissed off. That was disgraceful. All right? That was one of the most disgraceful acts I have ever seen. How dare you? That's frustrating. Boo a quarterback a who's been through injuries. Something this man has gone through wars. You guys can only imagine. Okay, if his body can't do it anymore, respect his decision. He owes you absolutely nothing. Okay, that was absolutely horrible. Well, okay, T. If I can play devil's advocate, do. You, is, <laughs> Man, all right. If it, if it happened in Philadelphia, do do, do you not think it, the same thing would happen? It doesn't matter if it's Andrew Luck or Carson Wentz or make up some football player in your mind who is the star of your team, the face of the Eagles, who in the third preseason week says, "Oh yeah, I'm retiring." You don't think that Philadelphia would have the same reaction? I think they would. I honestly think. I, you know what? I don't know. I, I I straight up, I don't know. I don't know what I mean, the reaction also, would be. It also be. depends on, you know, how good the player was and if he brought success to the team. Yes. Because uh, <laughs> if Andrew Luck were to win a Super Bowl with the Colts before he retired and that happened, it, that I don't wouldn't think be the it, reaction. I don't think it would be the reaction. That would not I know, be the reaction. I know we're dealing with hypotheticals here, but yeah. it there it, There was a huge part of me that cringed when I saw that just because – I know Andrew Luck is a nice guy. I mean, I saw the a video that was put together of every time he got like he got sacked a bunch of times, and each time he's like, "Hey, good hit, buddy," mm. you know, because hey, that's just the guy he is. He's a nice guy, and he was extremely talented, no doubt. And look, I know we're being robbed of that talent, but it's for the good of Andrew Luck. I agree. And it makes me sad, but Jacoby Brissett <laughs> will come through. I'm sure. I mean, and look, uh, listen. I'm sorry for yelling in everybody's ears, but I was just so passionate about that because the listen, the booze probably came from fans that's never ever played a snap in football. They've never yeah. had to go through, you know, the recovery process of going through a war for three hours, you know, getting your body banged around, getting abused, getting hit in the head, stomped with metal cleats on. You've never had to go through that. And the fact of the matter is that you guys booed because this man made a decision to choose his life over a life that he could possibly end up in a wheelchair. That's, man, I got to respect that. Like, come on now. This man dedicated his life to you. The, the least thing you can do is give him, a, give him a standing ovation. 
Give him that respect, please. You know, We're saw, better than this as human stat, beings. I saw a stat yesterday. Uh, I guess it's not a stat, but uh, you know, just an observation. Tom Brady outlived, football term speaking, mm-hmm. Peyton Manning, and then Peyton Manning's successor, Andrew Luck. Pretty crazy. And that's true. What do you think about it? But also, look at... He's his- not... He's clearly not a human. <laughs> No, I don't think Tom Brady's human at this point. He, like I said, he's Area 51's it's first ridiculous. public experiment. <laughs> oh boy, but yeah, um, I'm sorry I had to go off like that, but I was really passionate about that. No, yeah, it, no it's understandable. It's understandable because yeah, man, yeah. Yes. But I, you know and what? it's depressing for me too because I'll be honest. If I had to tell you guys who my second favorite team is, it is the Colts because I grew up in Indiana. And I know a and lot. I have a soft spot for the Colts. I know a lot of Colts fans, and yes, they were disappointed that you know Andrew Luck just all of a sudden retired. But they took it with class. My friends took it with class. They were like, you know, hey, look, it was his decision. You know, we just got to move on without I, him. And I also, I also think it's kind of a peer pressure thing in terms of the people in the stadium because you're going to hear the guy, ne- the drunk jerk next to you, boo, and you're going to be like, huh, I'll add to it, boo. And I, I I don't know how many times I've seen it in Philadelphia. I'll boo for no reason. I'll boo just because the people behind me are booing. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. I just go ah, the hell with At it. At least you admit boo. it. At least you admit it. But then, but then I also what? have I also have my moments where I start the booing too. Okay, you piece of Swiss cheese. Don't act like you haven't done it too. I, I don't. Whatever. You know what? You know what? Get off your high. I don't usually team. boo <laughs> unless it really calls for you know, right. Right, it, right. You have to really do something extreme for me to boo. Seriously, like lose a seven nothing lead. Yeah. And oh, I was I was doing more than booing. Lose nineteen to eleven. I was doing more than booing because you guys, you know, you guys really made a compelling argument to me last week, and I was like, dang, I gotta maybe I gotta fall back in, and then that, and then the Marlins game happened, and I was like, oh nope, screw it, nope. <laughs> yeah, that was. Really, I'm out. That was severely unfortunate. All right, it was. All right, All right. shut it down. All right. All right. Well, hey, you gotta do your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. All right, you missed any of today's episode, you can always go to philly-experience.simplecast.com. We are available on all major platforms, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. Download, rate, subscribe, let us know how we're doing. You can reach us on Twitter at thephillyexp1 on Twitter. This is our new time, every Tuesday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. If you can't get up that early, like I said, you can catch... And download anything that you missed on the website. Hey, and yeah, hey, communicate with us. If you're following us on Twitter or if you if you're subscribed on YouTube, leave a comment. I'm, I'm I want to hear from you guys. Come on, talk trash on me. I don't care. I'll, I'll talk trash. Actually, on you I will. All the, I, I'll kind of care. You, I talk trash on you all the time. You don't care. You make a good point there. <laughs> all right, everybody. We'll Every see, Tuesday. We'll see. It pisses me we'll off. We'll see you next Tuesday. What is going on back there? Boots to asses. I'm not putting up with it. It's too much horse. It's too much.